our Holy Spirit for our discussion. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O oh God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful. In that same spirit, help us to know what is truly right and always to rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I, when I, when I, um, and we read this, you know, what, twice a week, all the time, but always something specific hits us in it. And, you know, as we try to imagine these people um, that we're praying for, these groups, masses of people. And um, I, I look at the, at people that I have a hard time understanding um, like people who get involved in pornography and prostitution and those things. And if you look closely at them, I, I'll watch a story, just, you know, something like a crime TV or whatever to try to understand those people. And often they come from uh, parents that were not there for them or or there are those, you know, that get involved in the prostitution that are maybe college students that, you know, they've had an entitled life and they don't understand the evil world that they're stepping into. They've maybe been taught that material things are the most important things um, and making money or whatever. And so I, I, I thought about, you know, we're human beings and we are subject to the material world and the trappings of the material world and the devil can use that for his advantage to get us. And maybe a parent was out working hard and trying to provide everything. Um, because I know me as a single parent, what I could not provide, I always felt guilty and I thought, well, I'll try to make up for it in this way and that way. Um, and so sometimes we have a genuine uh, want to make something better, but we don't realize we're focusing on the wrong thing, which I did that often in my life. Um, I look back now and see that. Um, and you'll see these children that come, that become adults and come from families that had everything all the material things, what we would consider in America, the ideal childhood. And yet these are ones who may be turned to prostitution because they, they want those material goods, but don't have the belief in themselves to find it in the, in the proper way. So, and then you'll find on the other side of that, you'll find really poor family, not necessarily always poor, maybe middle to poor, mm -hmm. and they'll teach their children all the right things and their children will grow up satisfied with a normal life. They don't get caught up in those trappings of the material world, maybe because they didn't have access to it or maybe because they were taught not to value it. I don't know, but I do know that giving our children every single thing we think they need, um, when it comes to material things is can can be lost in um in our misunderstanding or our own personal things that we didn't have maybe as children so when i look at those people whether often there might be a mother who is just trying to provide for maybe five kids yeah. that she had and didn't realize so she's trying to get food so sometimes it's there and Sometimes it's, you know, they don't believe enough in themselves. Nobody told them they were capable or maybe they have learning disorders and they can't really operate in the systems that exist. So I think when I'm praying for those people, I, I try to um, imagine 
um, the Christ energy through the Holy Spirit surrounding them in their in what they're doing, right? And that and it gives them insight to say this isn't right. I need to find a different way. Whether they're coming from that amazing material background and they can go home to their parents and reorder their lives and they have that luxury. Um, but often people will get in that situation and they have to survive. They have to pay rent. They have to pay, you know, they're already behind the eight ball. So they have to start from, you You know, like addicts, they hit, they hit bottom and they have to start from the bottom. And I just, I, I have a visual in my mind when we're praying for people of, of things and I see things, maybe I see them in the our animation or whatever it is that we have in our, you know, that we get to see on our televisions today. But I imagine the, the wind coming in like the Holy Spirit, the same way that we have that picture of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I imagine just the healing <laughs> energy of the Holy Spirit going through whether whatever position those people are in and sweeping through and just reordering their understanding, giving them an insight. And I also see the Holy Spirit, the light, and the light illuminates, and suddenly they understand. And so I, I see that when we're praying for them. And then I, and, and, and then when we get to the second um, sorrow, the second joyful mystery, it's about the pro-life, um, you know, abortion, um, uh, and and maybe women who say, I can't do this, or I don't want to do this. I don't want to lose my body for a child I don't want to keep. But they don't know, because it's very hard for humans to see way ahead, especially when we're young. And they don't know. I saw a story of a child who, um, a woman who was um, taken from, her, well, she was, her, her grandmother was a nurse practitioner, I believe. And she got her daughter who didn't want an abortion, a saline abortion back then they did saline. And this woman is, I think her name's Melissa Ogden. She's a big speaker, speaker of abortion survivors. And her mother never knew that she survived. And her grandmother, when, she, when the child didn't die in abortion, she she forged her daughter's name and had the kid put up for adoption. She, the mother never knew. So when the mother found out, you know, years later, one of, I think her sister or whatever said, this is your child for whatever reason, she knew the details or something. And now that mother and daughter, you know, the daughter knows she didn't do it. It was her grandmother that, um, that tried to kill her. And, um, and so, and took her from her mother. And so she said, well, honey, you don't know what your life would have been like. Uh, her, 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 her family had money, you know, and they could have given everything materially. She, but evidently there was something missing in that family where this um, woman got pregnant and all they were worried about was their reputation. So, um, so now they have that beautiful experience. And I think, well, you know, if we look at God, maybe he wanted that child born of that parent for whatever talents they were going to be given and raised in another family. So if we trust God, we can say that adoption gives a child another chance. And maybe that child was supposed to grow up with that parent and someday come back and meet the mother who gave birth, like what happened in this, because this woman became an amazing person, amazing spokesperson for God's glory. And, um, and she now has her mother. So I, I just think about that when I watch the pro-life campaigners, because when I go to the doctor, I go past a, um, an abortion clinic and I see the women out there in the heat of the Florida sun and they're going back and forth with their signs. And I want to beep and say, good job, but I don't want to, you know, create ruckus because then they get, you know, then they're calling police saying they're causing problems. So I just, 
I look at it from all sides and I, and I just think if we only trusted God's will instead of wanting what we want, our material things uh, or, or providing out of guilt and, you know, so just again, it's in, in trusting God's timing. And then those who, who can't have children and want so much to have children that they will do anything even against God to get that. Um, when if the if the women who instead of having abortions were giving up babies because it's very hard to get babies for couples that want them so they'll they'll go in and they'll play with nature um, you know against God's advice and um, and women who take the pill for years and years and end up infertile which the pill industry says oh that doesn't happen but I can tell you it does because I know many women who it happened to um, so, uh, you know, all of these, these things just out of human wants and human misunderstandings. And especially when we're young, we don't understand things and we don't have foresight. And if we can teach our children to be, to be, I wish I would have known how to do that, to teach my children. I see today because I see the, the little things with instant gratification, how they, how they um, teach a child not to, they'll put some M&Ms and then the parent will walk away and say, now don't touch those. I see those things. We, I didn't know that back then. We didn't have the media we have today. K parents today, they're, they're lucky they have that, but so many are confused. So it's like, you have to, you know, they're looking at the wrong things, you know, and it's, you know, they're looking at the, listening to the wrong music and, you know, those kind of things that, that influence them. And I just think if, if, if we could all just trust God from the beginning, I wish I had. I have so many regrets and I try not to because God forgives, but I do have that. I wish I could go back and change things. And I wish I could explain things to my kids that because of my mistakes, they can't hear me, you mm -hmm. know? And it's very frustrating. And all I could do is pray and hope that they hear me someday. Like I heard my mother. I, it took till her deathbed for me to understand her about forgiveness, something I had to work on. I told you I'm a very black and white thinker. I see right and wrong and the hammer, you know, and uh, and I do it to myself. I don't just do it to other. It's it's how I judge myself, too. And so I don't know. I just thought about those those kind those people going through that and just trying to um send healing energy and the Holy Spirit and, and to take what we're doing here and everyone joining us to take our energies and surround the people that are, you know, living in that sinful life and asking God to get in there and illuminate and the Holy Spirit to get in there and heal. So that's all that that came to me today for some reason. Healing. We need healing in our lives. And the only one that can ultimately heal our hearts is our Lord. It's not the material, shiny things in the world. Those will not heal. Those will only give us worry, problems, and we will, you know, they'll heal a little bit temporarily. Like like our medical field. Like, they, they do the best they can, but, you know. but then, you know, it's nice to have yeah. something nice you can look at for a little bit, but yeah quite tired of it and you want to move on and you keep going and because it doesn't fulfill us and we think it's going to yeah once we have it we realize and then we forget and we look at the next shiny thing doesn't quench your thirst doesn't never thirst only only the living water of christ will um yes your thirst amen um yes. today's re today's um rosary um really showed me a lot of like faith faith mm -hmm. you know and 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 the way that they followed the tradition and the faith and the second joyful mystery the way that mary she, you know she she had such faith and such trust that she didn't even question she said yes lord yeah um you know um elizabeth said blessed is she who believed that the lord's words to her would be fulfilled I mean, it's, it's just, it's her faith and her belief and her trust that everything that the angel said to her is, is, is going to happen. You know, right. she was, she was raised in good soil. Yes. Other Anne um, yeah. 
watered her. Yes. He knew before of, of Mary um, that she was going because she also probably heard from an angel as well, which I don't know Anne's story exactly, which is Mary's mother. Um, but I need to look into that because that's so interesting to me. I don't think we have a lot of information. We don't, do we? That. No, we okay. don't. We just have names. But I can just imagine, you know, you can just yeah. imagine in, in there's actually a book that, that does that um, on Scribe that we have. I can't remember the name Corey, of it. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of imagine that and, and the way that she was um, fed spiritually. The good soil that you to, talk about. To be able to acknowledge the presence of the angel and to be able to have God in her life before that, to be able to be um, praying because um, I have a picture here that I love this picture because it shows Mary um, praying as she is praying, the angel approaches, you know, so yeah. like she's, she's praying with the open book. She's, she's, she's praying to God and, she, and then she sees the angel and it's that, it's That's that beautiful faith, picture. It's that faith that yeah. she had and also of Elizabeth. Um, yeah knowing when when she saw mary the joy the joy yeah. you know and the and the acceptance and then later on to keep following the tradition of even though she knew she carried god you know the son of god in her but following the tra the traditions of moses on the fourth joyful mystery you know they brought they brought jesus to the temple to present him to the lord and, you know, they were obedient, even though, you know, she didn't, she wasn't subject to the law of purification. She yet humbly submitted to it. They humbly submitted to the law, to the rules. They, well, can I just say, yes, can I just say now, um, you know, my daughter told me she saw a couple um, and they had a brand new baby, brand new. She said, I had $20 and she said, and I gave it to them. She said, because she said, and you know me, um, I don't, you know, and, and she said, but I, she said, it brought me to tears. Here they were with a brand new baby and they're like living out of a van and being an older person. And I've seen a lot of scams and even though, uh, uh, Fulton Sheen said, don't chance it. So I said to her, and she said, I said to her, you never know, it could be a scam. I said, uh, but I told her about Fulton Sheen, how he said, I wouldn't chance it. Um, and, uh, and so I'm, pr I, I said, I'm really proud of you for doing that. You know, she could have taken that $20 and did something. She spends so much money on skin things and all this crap. Um, but but I was really proud of her. And I said, you know, um, when we're young, we trust when it, especially when it hits us personally, because she doesn't, my daughter wants children so bad, but of course she's not ready for that. Um, and so she sees it and she, and she can't imagine because she's, she just would never, you know, be, she, like I was, I had children before I was ready, but my daughter would never, she couldn't handle that. I don't know how I did, but I, was too dumb to but anyway so but she trusted that person her youth and and I was proud of her for that and I think if we could all not be rebellious and be trustful but we live in a world today that is so distrustful we don't believe anything everything's fake news fake you know we don't believe anything we don't believe people because of scams like that mm -hmm. and and so Fulton Sheen said don't chance it. If you have the five dollars, now I keep money to be able to give just a dollar or two, not a lot, because I don't have a lot of money, but you know, just to give a little bit. And um and I'm proud of of her for for seeing that need and wanting it, whether it's a scam or not. If we could all be trust trusting no matter the culture we live in. Exactly. We trust for God. Yes. Yes, that's so important. And you have planted her in good soil. <laughs> <laughs> well, to some, some things, some things yeah. I really messed up on. <laughs> Which brings us to today's reading. Luke 8 was today's reading, 4 through 12, which, is, right. um, which, which was about the sower um, and, and the soil, the, the seeds. 
um, you know, the parable of the seeds and the... Um, so we can imagine then soil, richness of soil and miracle grow. What's miracle grow? Jesus is the miracle exactly. grow. <laughs> the um, seed is God's word. It says it right here. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those yes. on the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they do not root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, rich yeah. pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and persevering produce a crop. And we need to be the good soil so that we can produce yes. crops for our Lord. So we yeah. can follow in obedience to what he needs us to do. Not just read it and not just pray it, but to live it and to produce fruits. And when you think about, and when you think about um, something like abortion, right? And you think about the wind, the 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 wind will carry that seed, that baby, to the place where it can grow. If that mother can't take yeah. care of it, yeah. the Holy Spirit, the I, I imagine the wind going in there and taking that child, that that child on the wind. Of it's it came from the soil that God wanted. The child was brought up from the soil that God wanted in the seed, and then it is blown away by the wind of the Holy Spirit and put in good soil for maybe a mom and a dad who can't have children. Yeah. And see, we can take all of those symbols and understand how you know how they can. That so we trust God and we trust that wind of the Holy Spirit instead of thinking we know everything. Oh my gosh, I, I abort the child. I don't want a child of mine out there running around. Well, maybe that's just what God wants. That's why we need to put ourselves, Christ in ourselves at that moment and say, is this what Christ would want? Is this what right. Christ would want me to do? What would right. What would you like me to do with this problem, Lord? Answer me. It's right here. It's right. right. Here. Answer. It's in the Bible. And and we we ha it's. I I told you I was very afraid when I was young to read the Bible. That it sounds so stupid. But I was like, I don't understand it. And and I was scared of it. I had this. Ooh, you know. <laughs> um. I don't understand why, but I was. Yes. And um. And we have the we have that voice, that devil on this side, and the, and we have to teach our children about those things, and we have to use symbols because even though children cannot think abstractly before the age of twelve, we have to try to find a way to teach them what's in this book. Where's my book? Um, we have to find a way. There are so many good. Um, there's a new animation now on. Um, on form that's being made for um, animation of all the stories of the Bible. Um, and, you know, we always hear the beginning ones, you know, Noah's Ark, you know, all that. But there are so many other books to the Bible, which I'm trying to get to myself, which I'm working on a project now. And once I'm done it, I'm going to get back to my Bible study because I have to get this project done before I move on. Um, but anyway. Our to-do list. Yes, don't we all? Which, which in between all of our to-do lists, all of our lives, we need to fit Christ in it often. Yeah, and not get distracted, which is very hard. That you know, is it's hard. hard. Because we have this guy over here on this shoulder trying to distract us. The devil will use everything to distract us. And for people who have ADD, it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Christ, Christ is our water and he waters our soil. Yes. If we don't put water in our soil, you know, and the more we water it, the better we'll grow. 
And we have to filter that water for children to understand in yeah. a filtered way. So it's just like you could use symbol for everything to teach. And that's why, so, you know, people that have that talent have to, have to find ways to use their talent to spread the kingdom yeah. of God. People think, well, everyone's already doing that. Yeah, but you might have a specific story that might help one person turn around. If we, if, if we do all of these rosaries and we find, and one, just one person is saved, if we do this for 10 years and one person is saved, that's it. That's the value. It's a beautiful, you know, I love your earrings, by the way. Oh, um, that's, yeah. And that's what Mother Teresa said, one person at a time. And you know what? that one person will multiply just like the crop, the last crop multiplied to more than what the guy expected because once we spread the gospel to one person, that person to one person, it's a domino effect and you won't ever see it until you're in heaven and God will say, remember this? It'll play back in your life and you'll go, oh, that you was know that. really? Yes, that was you, really? Wow. Yeah. Everybody has a unique way of looking at things and God can use your unique way. There yes. is nobody in the world like you. Yes. So you have something for someone. So get out there and teach, Amen. get out there and share your story, get out there and share your talent for, to build God's kingdom and to be the soil that he can grow on for others. And Amen. that's it. Yes. That's our job. That when we are, when we are baptized, that is our job to go yes. forth and teach because nobody is like you and you have a divine appointment with somebody to change their life. Just keep, keep going. You don't know. You might've had that. I had, you have many divine appointments. I'm sure it's not just one, but. Just every day, be that we have to be that soil for someone to hear that message, to to point to God, is the lighthouse. He is the lighthouse, mm -hmm. and you are to point to Him to show someone this is where you go for love, for comfort, because that's all we're really all looking for is love and comfort, and we have it. We have the seed in our heart. We yeah. just have to water it to let it grow. Yeah. He plants it there. When he knits us together, he plants it there. Yes. Amen. Amen. So may the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all kindly and give you peace and love and water. Water for your soil. Lots of water. And humility and protection out there. So go out there and be Christ to others. Amen. Amen. I love you all. And and when you say um, humility, we have to put aside our pride in thinking we know yeah. and trust God and humble ourselves that we don't know everything and to trust that God does and he will guide us if we trust him and just and look in his tradition. Just like Mary did. Mary did yeah. that. Done. just like the Jesus. ultimate she was the ultimate obedient yes, person the obedience and the trust and the faith to not question to not say why just right. yes lord don't say why just say yes lord yes okay there's a reason for everything it's his reason that matters not ours right the right. 5589 his ways are way higher than our ways <laughs> right and and we have to try to think the best instead of the worst because it's easy to think the worst but if you can tap into god you will see the best even in the person you can't stand the most and you can say god is trying to work in their heart despite all the obstacles you know yeah. god is trying to work in the hardness of their heart just like he was trying to work in the hardness of my heart at times in my life and i have to be able to see that in another person <laughs> right You're talking to me now girl You're talking to me. oh me too i love you 
Okay, we'll see you all hopefully three o'clock. If you guys can pop up for just 15 minutes and pray divine mercy with us, that would be wonderful. If not, you can catch the replay. And we will see you on Monday. Have a very blessed Sunday.